Let us take in Shiva Shakti in five deep breaths. Om Shiva Shakti Om Om 
शिव शक्तियो ओ शिव शक्तियो शक्तियों ब्रह्मा सृष्टि कर्ता चम विष्णु परिपालक शिव शिव दो संहारकारको गुणातीत ज्योतिपनातन प्रकृति प्रकृति प्राकृत प्रकृति पर विधाता भक्ता ध्यान येषु रूपेशु यीति तत्तूप बिभर्षि च I'm holding back myself to explain this Dhyan Shloka. At the time, which is very apt, I will take it up for explanation. Brangi cha nata not kata. करीबदग्राहि स्पुरन माधवा आह्लादो नादयुतो महासितवपु पंचेशुना चाद्रतः सत्पक्ष सुमनो वनेशु सपुन साक्षान मदीये मन राजीवे भ्रमराधिपो विहरताशैलवासी विभो सो अवर रेवर शंकराचार्य इज नॉट सैटिस्फाइड येट इन एंजॉइंग Shiva, in connection with Brahmara. So, in this verse also, he is comparing Shiva with Brahmaradhiva. Brahmaradhiva is the male bee. Shiva is the Brahmaradhiva of Brahmaramba. Who is very much there in Sri Shaila? Here we have to remember why Adi Para Shakti Lalita Amba took the form of Brahma Ramba. What is the story behind it? There was Aruna Sura who had the boon that. only sound can kill him no other manifestation the sound so 
Shakti took the form of Brahmara, the bee. And she came with her battalion of other bees following her in making the loud sound of Can you imagine it going piercing the ears of that Arunasura? What type of a boom is that? Only sound can kill him. That means the very source of manifestation, which is sound. So he said, no other manifestation can kill me, but the very source of manifestation should kill me. So Devi had to take this form as Brahmaramba. Nada, which is the very source of manifestation. And Shiva as Brahmaradhipa is also very much residing in Sri Shaila. That is what it says. Sri Shaila Vasi Vibho. One who is residing in Sri Shaila Giri. So we can study this verse as referring to the male bee and also to Shiva. So let us see. Bhrungi Cha Natanot Kata. One meaning is Bhrungi is the female bee. To attract that female bee. Bhrungi Icha. To attract that female bee, the male bee, Natanot Kataha, it starts dancing, hovering around that female bee. When it is referring to Shiva, Brungi cha natanot kata. Brungi was Pramatha Gana, one of the important Ganas who was very much attached to Shiva. And he is a great sagely Pramatha Natha that he was always devoted to Shiva, 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 Shiva. So when he went into Samadhi Stiti, Brungi, Shiva was in his alone, Sanyasatva. He was not with Shakti. He was all alone because according to the request of Brahma to create the whole universe, he requested Shiva to depart with Shakti so that there is Shiva Shakti who can mingle together to create the whole universe and also send their genes and DNA to the whole universe. So during that time, Shiva was alone, who was Dhyanasta, Dhyanasakta. So this Brungi was very much attached to that Shiva in Kailas. So the Kailasa was filled with all the Ganas, the Rishis, but no female there. When he, Brinki went into that Samadhi, he was in that Samadhi for so many centuries. The time has lapsed so long. When he opened his eyes and when he saw Shiva, he was served by a female who is Parvati. He could not bear it. He could not take it anymore. Kailasa, he thought Kailasa is such a pure place with all Dhyana Sakta people around Shiva. Who is she to come and pollute the Kailasa? 
so he was very much shocked by this shiva to bring him back to sense to accept parvati as part and parcel of shiva he enacted with the cooperation of parvati and other ganas as well the whole period all episodes which happened during his samadhi sthiti so bhringi came to know what the reality is yet he was not ready to accept parvati being so close to shiva he was devotee of shiva so he used to show his devotion by going around shiva alone even when shiva and parvati are together he would go in between them and do pranama only to shiva so by this parvati got insulted and she said let me take back the whole of my portion because you are not wanting me my presence in you so he just collapsed and he was left with no element but just a he so because of this shiva gave him energy through giving one more leg to that bhrungi who was trying to sneak through shiva alone as bhramara because parvati was very close to shiva when he started going around only shiva she was becoming more and more closer yet he took the form of bhringa the bee and started moving around only shiva as pradakshina going in between shiva and parvati so that is when she got angry and took back the whole energy her portion from bhringi so this enactment natana happened because of bhringi who was a great devotee of shiva but to bring him back into sense shiva had to do that natana natana means enacting natanot kata he did such a wonderful job that the whole world felt who thing is happening once again to that extent it was real and bhringi was convinced oh he is married yet he was trying to go around shiva alone by taking the bhringi form as a bee so he is called bhringi bhringi ichha natanot kata and then karimadat grahi the bee kari mada mada means that um, in red elephant there will be juice coming out that sweat is attracting the bees so kari mada grahi one who is attracted towards that mada intoxicating nectar like the sweat which is coming from the head of forehead of elephant kari when it refers to shiva he killed gajasura who was very arrogant and shiva taught him the lesson to give up that ego 
கரிமத கிராஹி ஸ்புரன் மாதவா லாதோ மாதவா when it refers to be madhava means vasanta kala vasanta rutu spuran madhava ahlado when the spring season comes emerges with lots of colorful flowers the bee becomes extremely happy as it gets so much of nectar so it is very happy ahlada it enjoys the season madhava which is vasanta when it refers to shiva one who is attracted to madhava which is vishnu and he is happy about it when was shiva got attracted to vishnu during the amrita manthana to distribute the amrita vishnu took the form of mohini which was very enchanting with that beautiful enchanting form he was serving the amrita with so much of grace and lalitya to all the devatas that devatas were so happy and they were enchanted by the beauty of mohini and they were all talking about that mohini avatara with so much of interest and involvement and they ran to share it with shiva shiva wanted to teach them the very lesson about the essence of the supreme what it is why are you all getting so enchanted by a temporary illusory form of mohini what is so great about it so he invited vishnu and he requested him to again take that mohini avatara knowing shiva vishnu said shiva you cannot underestimate that incarnation of mohini don't underestimate the beauty and the value of that mohini so he didn't take right then and there that mohini avatara again as the time lapsed shiva when he was in the forest a beautiful deer came around and it transformed itself into a beautiful woman enchanting form and shiva was so surprised and engrossed in looking at that form are how beautiful it is how can it be when shiva was so immersed in enjoying that form vishnu came back to his original form from that woman and he said shiva you are that supreme you are the one who controls the ignorance but still you are mesmerized how can it be possible when you are that brahman don't play the leela of a common ignorant person come back to your self leaving that leela then she was smiled and said you are me and i am you we are one so this whole episode shows how vishnu had to take the form of mohini 
to lift up the ignorance to the reality knowledge and because of that value in that mohini avatara shiva is said to spuran madhava ahladah one who is extremely happy being attracted to madhava to vishnu so that was a lesson nada yuto nada yuto b is with the sound so b is also called nada yuta when it refers to shiva nada is shakti adi para shakti it comes in uh, lalita sasnama also para pratyakshiti rupa pashyanti para devata madhyama vaikhari rupa bhakta manasa hamsika so it is that nada shakti who manifests in four levels and the final is vaikhari way one can experience the sound through the physical ears as well so here as brahmaramba also she is using that vaikhari because he asked for nada as the killer and shiva is with her that means it is shiva shakti who are doing the work together in shri shaila maha sita vapu maha the great asita vapu asita means jet black beautiful dark black color is b got it maha asita vapu maha sita vapu that refers to that b which is jet black in color the same word when we split it as maha sita vapu that refers to sita is pure white that refers to shiva who is satvamayi shiva so he is pure white karpura gaura shiva see the grandeur of shankaracharya selecting the words so well maha sita vapu pancheshuna chadrita adrita means one who is revered worshiped adored respected pancheshuna means one who has the five arrows that is manmatha kamadeva he respects the bees by making them as the string of his bow so the bumble bees are standing in straight line that forms the string of his dhanush that is the bow pancheshuna chadrutah in the same way when it refers to shiva kamadeva did adored worshiped shiva by sending all the five panchabanas by making shiva as the target he worshiped him he adored him only when you value something only when you value or when it is important to us we look at them we pay attention to them we want to communicate or we want that object or that person only when 
we have that attachment to them so kamadeva if he had to target that shiva not with one arrow but with all his five arrows that means it's a great honor to shiva kamadeva applying all the five arrows at shiva means it is the greatness of shiva for which kamadeva had to shower all the five valuable arrows so in that way pancheshuna chatrutah it refers to shiva also satpakshah sumana avaneshu when it refers to shiva the words would go satpakshah satpakshah means that paksha paksha means the side or um that group paksha he is taking that side which is in the path of dharma sat means good dharmic path sat paksha he takes with sumana all the devatas devas he takes the paksha of the dharma which is with the devatas devata gana why avaneshu to protect all of them to protect the devatas he is taking the sat paksha when it refers to the bees it would be sat paksha suman vaneshu vaneshu it is not avaneshu avaneshu is to protect vaneshu in the forest in the garden of sumana beautiful flowers sat paksha paksha means the two um, wings which the bee has sat paksha means with two wings that which is b sumana vaneshu that which moves around in the vana sa punah sakshat let that be let that shiva again pratyak sakshat right in front in the sense so that i can experience i can realize wait madiye mano rajive in my mind which is lotus in the lotus of my heart let me enjoy let that be come and hover around so that i can enjoy let that shiva bhramaradipa of bhramaramba let her come let him come so that i can enjoy the company in the lotus of my heart shri shaila bhramaradipo viharatam let that bhramara adipa viharatam let them go round and round again and again sakshat so that i can recognize realize experience enjoy the presence and the movement of them again and again in my heart which is lotus just imagine if one can feel the presence not just an idol like shiva shakti but movement of them viharatam that means we certainly experience that they are working on the whole being because i am experiencing their presence 
their movements in my heart as lotus. Shri Shaila Vasi Vibhu, the one who is residing in Shri Shaila and Vibhu, one who takes, one who pervades the whole world and he manifests in different forms as well. Vividham Bhavati Iti Vibhu. He takes any forms. Karunya Mrita Vashinam Ganavi Padishma Cheta Karmatam Vidya Sasya Palo Dayaya Suman has some savior Mayura Madrinilayam Chanchajata Mandalam Shambho Van Chati Nila Kandhara Satatvam Me Manish Chataka. So he was Brahmaradhipa. Now Shiva becomes. Nila Kandhara, which refers to clouds, the rain bearing cloud. Nila Kam Dhara. Nila is the dark blue color. Kam means water. Dhara means bearing or holding. That which has the water which is dark in color, is about to shower the rain. That cloud is called Neela Kandhara. Neela Kandhara. Kandhara also means the neck. One who has Neela, the blue neck. Neela Kandhara. So it, this verse refers to both Shiva and the thick, dark, Rain bearing clouds. Neela Kandhara Karunya Amrita Varshina. Amrita, the rain is nothing but nectar. Nectar, it has the capacity to give life. It is life provider, the water, the rain. It gives life. And when we are very, very thirsty, drinking pure water tastes very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. So, that rain water, which is so pure, is nothing but Amrita. That is Karunya. It is compassionate. Cloud, without running away to some other city or some other part, it showers the rain with compassion. Our understanding of compassion is in one way. When we take it, the nature as it is working the whole thing with cooperation of one another, the whole nature is showing magnificent compassion in its own way. So, when we look at that cloud, which is rain-bearing cloud, when it rains, it is nothing but compassion. It is not holding back, nor it is moving away. It is that Neela Kandhara, which is Karunyamrita Parshinam. It is giving that 
nectar like amrita like ambrosia like water the rain water shiva that was for cloud now shiva karunya amrita varshinam he won't give just like tirtha they give in the temple just one drop no varshinam he is showering the rain of that amrita with so much of compassion bole baba shiva is that so he is showering when adi shankara acharya has said karunya amrita varshinam it is like veda vakya shiva is showering that nectarus amrita which is like rain it is pouring down only thing is we have to make our mind and heart which is a big vessel which is inverted so just make it receive it and feel happy and keep it in the heart which is also a big lake manasa sarovara keep it there karunyamrita varshinam so all of us can be sure that shiva is showering so quickly we have to make our mind heart open for it and fill it ghana vipat grishma chira karmatham karmatha means one who is deeply involved immersed in the diligent work of what ghana vipat the great difficulties great torment great heat which is produced during grishma grishma is summer hot summer which is giving so much of ghana vipat great calamities great heat drought so the cloud is diligently working immersed in working towards grishma chida what is it ghana vipat the great difficulties which is cooked during summer chida to destroy that this cloud rain bearing cloud is very hardly working it is putting its full effort to shower the rain just visualize probably most of us would have gone through those summer days in very hot places at that point if you see a cloud which is dark thick dark blue color or black and we know it is filled with so much of amrita water rain how satisfying how calming all the anxiety the heat everything would come down visualize that go back into that scenario ghana vipat grishma chida karmatham so if this is the case with cloud which is diligently working karmatha towards taking away destroying the great difficulties the drought because of the drought there will be many other connected problems in life all those things it wants to 
chira it wants to take away so it has to be karunya amrita varshinam isn't it so it is karunya when it refers to shiva in life there are so many situations by which we are getting cooked boiled burned and that feeling would be like the hot summer tapana and shiva being karunyamayi is very much a karmatha in taking away that vipat the difficulties so when it refers to manas chataka that is the mind as chataka pakshi that is also feeling extremely tormented which is going through the difficult days of the summer and it is waiting for the rain drop to fall into its beak so chataka pakshi is set to live on nothing but the rain water which directly falls on its beak into the mouth so without that rain drop you can well imagine how difficult situation it would have gone through that summer there is so much of heat and the rain is very much wanted for its survival and it is waiting and waiting and waiting but that when it sees that cloud which is bearing that rain in it how happy it would feel like that the mind has become the chataka pakshi the chataka bird the mind is like that it is parching with different thoughts which are connected with the world and the shiva thought is not there in that manas which is like chataka pakshi so it is waiting for that shiva thought to come in into that mind which is waiting like chataka so when it is shiva the mind which is chataka pakshi is meditating on shiva it wants shiva as that amrita varshinam to send his grace in the form of thought in the form of vision for that manas to cherish it because it can take only the water drop which is nothing but the thought on shiva as chataka pakshi and then ghana vipad grishma chida karmatham so it, it is in three levels actually we can take it one as the cloud raining the water which is auspicious to all the farmers and all the people because they are getting the physical rain water secondly as shiva who showers his grace as that rain thirdly to the mind which is like the chataka pakshi the thought of shiva the grace of shiva is like the rain water so it reminds me of saundarya lahari where shankaracharya ji 
the meaning layer after layer like that even in this we can feel it in what all ways that kandhara is satiating the thirst in three different things vidya sasya phalodayaya vidya sasya <laughs> phalodayaya for that sasya means the plant what plant is that vidya sasya the plant of knowledge that is one meaning vidya sasya phalodaya for it to fruity uh, fruitify to give fruit of that vidya sasya shiva is that because it is the consciousness which makes the human to understand and to bear the knowledge of both iha and para so vidya sasya phalodayaya he is the one who graces that phala the fruit of vidya sasya in the form of atma vidya brahma vidya liberation moksha that is the phala of this vidya sasya another meaning of vidya is it is magical skill magical skill is also called vidya so for that manas chataka pakshi the mind which is that chataka it is like the magical pill vidya sasya for that to phala to give the fruit for the farmers and all the people living beings vidya sasya vidya there it means gaining as a wealth as a cash crop this sasya is vidya it is a gain so vidya sasya phalaya to phalodayaya to to give rise to the fruit in the form of a great harvest crops coming up so that it fills all beings vidya sasya phalodayaya sumana samsevyam here sumana samsevyam sumana means one who has the good mind also devatas they all some savior they all cherish savor adore worship shiva the cloud which is giving the rain kandhara it is adored worshiped revered by all the beings because it is giving rain sumana samsevya ichakritim and shiva he can take forms of his will he can take any form as he wishes even the cloud kandhara cloud also takes different forms according to its will so if we really look at this shloka most of us would have gone through it, this situation in our life itself if you go to rajasthan or any other very dry places deserts one can really feel it what shankaracharya is telling in this shloka in uh, lagan movie they have brought out uh, one song ganana ganana that song
So, Ichakritim, even the clouds, when we say Ichakritim, people who have gone to Kailash, they would have experienced it. The clouds would be in so many different forms, shapes, that all the yatris, including realized masters and swamijis who take the whole group, everyone get involved in playing the game of seeing what is that cloud, what this cloud is telling us, what do you remember when you see that cloud? So to that extent, all the clouds are telling something or the other Puranic episodes or scenes. It is very interesting how, how the clouds also take different forms to play that game of mind there when we go to Kailash. So I really like this Ichakritim, the clouds taking different forms according to its will, which Shiva also does as Nila Kandhara. Nritya Bhakta Mayuram and all the Bhaktas who are dancing like peacocks. They are all so happy looking at that cloud, rain-bearing cloud. They become so ecstatic that they start dancing with so much of joy, hope, and happiness, and looking at the wonderful shape. So all emotions mixed together in the mind, they start dancing like peacocks. Bhakta. When, who is that bhakta? Firstly, the farmers who are depending so much on the rain. And all other human beings who are waiting for that rain. Not only that, Nritya Bhakta Mayuram. All the bhaktas of Shiva, they also start dancing with so much of joy, looking at Nila Kandhara. Even thinking of Nila Kandhara, all the bhaktas start dancing. Adri Nilayam, one who resides in the Kailasa. Even the clouds on the mountains, which is so high, the thick, dark cloud, it looks as though it is sitting on the Adri, the mountain. Adri Nilayam. And then, when we take it as the Manaschataka, Sahasrara Chakra is referred as Kailasa. So, when that Shiva, 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 Shiva thought becomes stronger and stronger, it goes and settles there, which is Kailasa. Adri Nilaya, that thought, which is like the uh, rain bearing cloud, it becomes stronger and it stays there. Adri Nilaya. Chancha Jata Mandalam. Chancha Jata Mandalam. That shining, wavy, wavy. Jata Mandalam, he has lots of hair around the Jata, which is shining, brilliant, around Shiva's head. When it refers to that cloud as Nilakandhara, Chancha Jata Mandalam, Jata, they, it refers to the lightning. Lightning is also called as Jata. Because it is a rain-bearing cloud, it has so much of lightning emerging, making it look more beautiful. 
and it is so shiny because the background is thick dark blue or dark black so all the more that jata looks very shiny chancha jata mandalam mandala means there is not just one strike uh, lightning striking group of lightning taking place shambho oh the giver of auspiciousness shambho even the cloud is auspicious the one which is giving life vanchati neelakandhara sada tvam me manashchatakaha the mind which is like the chataka pakshi is sada tvam vanchati it desires you it wants you it is craving for you o neelakandhara shiva neelakam dhara shiva which is cloud sada all the time so we should become that mind of the chataka bird towards shiva when our mind becomes that chataka bird towards shiva automatically even the physical world cloud will also become auspicious and we experience that also as shiva so again we are seeing how shankaracharya is experiencing different forms of nature as shiva akashi nashiki samasta paninam netra kalapi natanugrahi pranavopadesh ninadai ke kiti yogiyate shyamam shaila samudbhavam ghanaruchim drishtva natantam mudam vedanto pavane vihara rasikam tam nilakantham bhaje so nilakandhara means one who has the blue neck that is shiva nilakandhara and shankaracharya compared that with cloud rain bearing cloud here nilakantha it is the same blue neck shiva who is compared with nilakantha that is the mayura which is peacock so he is compared with the peacock now this refers to both mm. it is the same blue neck shiva who is compared with nilakantha that is the mayur which is peacock so he is compared with the peacock i think one now. of you should uh, switch off this and mute thank you akashena shikhi when it refers to shiva akashena shikhi the whole akasha the sky the space becomes his head shikha the hair which has vyoma keshi he has the hair which is called vyoma vyoma also means the sky samastha phaninam netra kalapi 
he has decorated himself very artistically kalapi very beautifully he has decorated himself as ornament with samasta phaninam netra netra means the very important sense organ among all the five because this whole prapancha is nama rupa prapancha whatever we perceive is through form so netra plays very important role the eyes play important role so when someone is very important in the whole group that person is like netra kanmani we say apple of my eyes so like that vasuki is the most important serpent among all snakes so he is wearing him as beautiful ornament natanugrahi pranavopadesha ninadaihi nata anugrahi whoever surrenders nata to bend or to do pranama one who surrenders and to grace them anugrahi to show anugraha on them he initiates them into pranava pranavopadesha ninadaihi so he initiates them into that pranava omkara how through keki iti keki keki means bijaksharas what are those bijaksharas ka refers to shiva a refers to shakti ka refers to shiva e refers to shakti so shiva shakti shiva shakti shiva shakti shiva shakti like that keki 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 shiva is giving the pranavopadesha through the ninadaihi through the sound ke ki ke ki which are nothing but bijaksharas of shiva shakti yogiyate who is adored who is praised shyamam that is shyamalamba who is lalitamba who is dark in color dark color shaila samudbhavam one who is born in shaila she is girisute himasute she is the daughter of that shaila himalaya ghanaruchim drishtva looking at her splendor magnificence in all aspects shiva starts natantam muda he starts dancing with joy looking at that shyama and shaila samudbhava who is girija parvati vedantopavane vihar rasikam one who loves to roam move in vedanta upavana that means in the upanishads aranyakas and brahmana in all these ved vedangas he would like to roam around that means what shiva shiva is the brahman supreme absolute who is pure consciousness the pure consciousness being the very goal of the vedas it is the essence of vedas and the next and the next and the next which has spilt the essence the con pure consciousness throughout the literature throughout the literature so 
Vedantopavane. And that it is like a beautiful garden as well. It is not scattered and like thick, dark forest. No. It is like Upavana. It is really well kept, well maintained, beautiful, enjoyable, which brings peace and calmness. Because we see that Shiva, 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 Shiva in all these different categories of the Vedas. It looks as though Shiva is roaming in all these different categories of Veda, different literature. Isn't it beautiful? Shiva is the essence of all. But when we are studying, we hop from one to another. Along with us is coming in everything. That looks like Vihara. Rasika. And he loves it. Tam Neela Kantham Bhaje. I adore and Bhaje. I sing with happiness in my mind. That Neela Kantha. Same thing refers to peacock also. Akashena Shikhi. On, on its top, it has that plume which is like Shikha for the peacock. Akashena Shikhi. Samastha Phaninam. In all its hood like feather. Samastha Phaninam. Netra Kalapi. There are so many eyes on the hood like feather, which is so artistic, which is so beautiful. Nata Anugrahi. Nata, one who has just fallen down, bent down with so much of distress, sorrow. So much of helplessness, Nata, one who has fallen down. To bring them back to be straight, Anugrahi, to lift them up. Pranavopadesha Ninadaihi. Here, Pranavopadesha, what type of Pranavopadesha it is? Being Mayura. Pranava, it is Pranava. The meaning of word Pranava is the controller of the life force, the giver of the life. So, for a person who is so depressed, feeling so helpless, in a very bad mood, A peacock comes and beautifully dances in front of them and it starts making the sound. Naturally, the mind diverts towards looking at that Mayura, which is dancing and which is making sound also. So it uplifts, it gives a kind of happiness to the person who is Nata. Nata Anugrahi Pranavopadesha Ninadaihi. That it brings up the joy in them. It is like life giving. For example, we have so many pets. If, if there is a very sickly person, the first thing they do is bring a pet, a dog or a cat as a pet and give it to that person or even a bird. And the person improves because they are getting pure love from that pet. In the same way, this peacock, through the sound, keki, it, it makes the sound keki, keki. So it is called keki. 
Mayura is also thrown as Kiki. Through that sound, it is bringing back that joy and life. There is something more to look at. And the person who has Nata, he lifts him up. Natanu Grahi Pranavopadesha Ninadaihi with the word uh, sound. Kekiti Yogi Yate. And because of that, the Mayura is also called Keki. Shyamam Shaila Samudhavam. Shyamam, that dark, dark rain bearing cloud when it sees. Shyamam cloud. Shaila Samudhavam. And that dark cloud looks as though it is coming from the Shaila, from the mountain. So it comes, it peaks up on the uh, mountain. So it looks like Shaila Samudbhavam, as though it has come out of that mountain, which is the cloud. Ghanaruchim, looking at its color and the grandeur of the cloud. Trishtva, looking at that. Natantam Muda, the peacock starts dancing with joy. Because it is seeing the rain bearing dark cloud which is coming out of that mountain. Vedam Topavane Vihara Rasikam. And it loves to move around, dance around, roam around in Vedam Topavana. In the field of kusha grass. The kusha grass is also called Veda. Bundles and bundles of kusha grass are kept Veda. And the field is filled with kusha grass, Upavana. In that, it would love to roam around. So, Shiva, he is very much the form of all pervasive knowledge. So he is also Vedantopavane Vihara Rasikam. And this peacock in the other way, which roams around in the Kusha grass, Upavana. Somewhat garden like field. Sankhya Garmati Nakyo Harikara Kata Prabhutanak Dwano Varita Gajitam. Devishadam drishtikchaka chanchalam Bhaktanam paritosha bhashpa Vitatir vrishti mayuri shiva Yasmin ujjvalatandavam Vijayate tam nilakantham bhaje Sandhya Gharma Dinatyayo. Again, this refers to Shiva and the peacock. Both. Gharma Dina means the summer, the hot summer. Gharma Dina. Atyayo. At the end of that, that means it can be taken as in the evening or at the end of the summer days. Sandhya in the evening. Harikara ghata prabhuta anaka dvano. Harikara ghata. Hari is Vishnu who is playing the drums. Making the loud sound of 
anaka that means the drums the drum beats of vishnu's hand which are giving loud sound like varida garjitam like the thunder sound sandhya gharma dinatyayo in the evening of towards the end of summer days as though heralding the rainy season is about to come to cool down the whole earth and all the beings on the earth as though it is heralding how is it vishnu is playing that drums with his hands which are giving loud sound as varida garjitam like the roar of the thunders divishadam drishti chhata chanchala drishti chhata of drishti chhata means the collective eyes all the devatas are looking seeing the beauty of the dance of shiva so they are eagerly seeing the dance with their eyes which are shining like the thunder bolt so the sound of the thunder is also very loud prabhuta and even the lightning are nothing but the eyes which are so bright looking at shiva tandava divishadam drishti chhata chanchala which are very bright the eyes of those devatas bright as the thunderbolts bhaktanam paritosha bhashpa vitati drishti and all the bhaktas the devotees are showering shedding the tears of extreme joy paritosha bhashpa ananda bhashpa they are shedding continuously as vrishti the tears it is continuous mayuri that is shakti parvati shiva that is also shakti shakti who is the female peacock penhen mayuri shiva and yasmin ujjwala tandavam vijayate to make her happy mayuri and shiva which is parvati to make her happy ujjwala tandavam is dancing to such an extend that the whole world is reverberating with happiness not only the people bhaktas but also the devatas and vishnu who is giving the beats for him to dance the tandava vijayate tam neelakantham bhaje i bow down to that neelakantha i worship that neelakantha who is happily dancing sandhya gharma dinatyayo hari kara ghat prabhutanak dhwano when it refers to uh, peacock sandhya gharma dinatyayo as though to herald to the world this summer hot days are coming to an end very fast because there is 
the thunder which I am hearing. When it refers to that peacock, Harikara is one that removes the distress. Which is that? It is clouds. Rain bearing cloud. Harikara. Aghata. When they collide with one another. Harikara. Aghata. When the two rain bearing clouds are colliding with one another. Aghata. Prabhuta nakadvano. It gives out the loud sound. As though it is a big drum. And Divishada Drishti Chata Chanchala. And all the bhaktas, all beings are looking towards that heaven, the sky, where that sound is coming from. So these eyes are also becoming chanchala with so much of happiness, wonder, hope, enthusiasm. They are all looking at the rain-bearing clouds. So all the eyes collectively are looking towards Divishadam, Dev. Bhaktanam Paritosha Bhashpa Vidatir Vrishti. And with so much of joy, wow, the summer days are coming to an end. There we see the rain bearing clouds and they are all shedding tears of joy. Isn't it? For farmers, for all beings, it is very much needed. So, the rain-bearing cloud is so auspicious, Shiva, that they are enjoying. And the joy of tears are rolling like Vrishti. Paritosha Bhashpa Vidatir Vrishti. Mayuri Shiva Yasmin Ujjvatandavam Vijayate. So, that Neelakanta is also dancing in front of Mayuri to attract and telling, see, look at the cloud. It is going to rain any moment. Shiva, it is auspicious to Kajol to make her happy. This Nilakantha is joyously dancing. And I adore it. Tambhaji. Adhyayam nita tejase Shruti padai vedyaya sadhyayate Vidyananda mayatmane Tijagata samrakshano dyogine Dhyaya kila yogi bhi Suraganai dhyaya maya vine Samyak Tandava Samhamaya Jatine Siyam Nadhi Shambhave So, Adhyaya, Shiva, who is the primordial, he is the very first one, Adhya. It is the consciousness which is triggering Shakti to manifest herself as the whole universe. If that consciousness is not there, nothing will happen. And it is impossible. 
So, Adhyaya, this Shiva, the consciousness, is the very first, foremost. Amita Tejase and his radiance, brilliance, is Amita, unlimited, immeasurable Tejas, radiance. Shruti Padair Vedyaya, who can be who can be known only through Shruti Padaihi, through the words of Shruti on the Veda Vangmaya, the whole literature. Because they are acting like the springboard. When we dive in the pool, we go up the ladder. So for that, we need the whole literature, scriptures. With the help of those scriptures, we climb up that springboard. We stand on that. From there, with one forceful jump, we get into the water. So, Shruti Padai Vedyaya. And what is Shiva to know what the water is? We do need the help of all these scriptures. Shruti Padai Vedyaya Sadhyaya. And he is the goal to be achieved, experienced, known, sadhyaya. is the goal of life. Te vidyananda mayatmane, one who is the embodiment of vidya, the knowledge, and ananda, bliss. Trijagata Samrakshano Dyogine, one who is immersed, engaged in protecting all the three worlds. Dhyaya Akhila Yogi Bhi. And he is the Dhyaya to all the yogis. Dhyaya means there is nothing else to know. I want to know what Shiva is. I want to experience Shiva. That's the only thing they have as the goal of their life. Goal of breathing every day. Ease for that sake. Eating every day for that sake. So they are having this body also to Achieve that dhyaya, that goal, who is Shiva. Dhyaya khilat yogi bhi. Suragana geyaya. And all the suragana, all the devatas, the gamut of devatas, they all praise and sing about Shiva. What else is he? Maya vine. One who is capable of controlling the Maya and also letting that Maya manifest herself and keep all the beings in that control of the Maya. So he is having everything. He is Mayavi who has the control, total control. Mayavi. And he does the job with so much of skill. Like a magician. Mayavine. Samyat Tandava Sambhramaya. And he's also greatly involved in dancing that Tandava so beautifully. That means what? 
he is working hand in hand with shakti to see that the whole world is working in unison he is involved in everything yet he is beyond because he is mayavi and also samyak tandava sambhramaya he is very much involved with happiness with joy he is involved to work with shakti when it comes to this whole universe jatine one who is jatadhari the jata represents symbolizes the discipline yogi quality in him sanyasi quality in him one who is focused dhyan aa sakta jatine seyam nadhi shambhave this pranamas to that shambhu who is auspicious and doing always the auspicious work so here the combination of samyak tandava sambhramaya jatine the combination of those two as i said jata represents the discipline high discipline uh sanyasi yogi serious sadhaka and who is very much involved in dhyana that is one type of life here samyak tandava sambhramaya he is dancing with so much of joy aren't they uh, opposites it looks like that for us because we differ- differentiate between the jata and tandava they are not too different we think sanyasis yogis or sadhakas they don't have any life they are very dry and they are just breathing and they are just living they don't have any enjoyment they don't have joy in their life we might think it is not so they are so joyful but their kind of joy is different in different dimension their way of enjoyment is of different dimension so they are joyful all the time and they are ready to dance all the time with so much of joy and that discipline jata is helping them to be in that mood of joy 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 ananda and the body is dancing with so much of joy on its own so the body is saying even though sanyasi sanyasis are also having the same kind of body like us but the way we are using the body for enjoyment for dancing is different how they use the body for enjoyment and dancing is different so even they are very joyful they are also samyak tandava sambhramaya they are involved jatine they are at the same time very disciplined and for all of them shiva is the leader who is the greatest tandava dancer who is the greatest mahajati so that is the speciality of shiva <coughs> next one is also very uh, small one i think i will finish it mm-hmm.
ಕಾತ್ಯಾಯತಿ ಗುಣಾತ್ಮನೆ ಪುರಜಿತೆ ಕಾತ್ಯಾಯನಿ ಶ್ರೇಯಸೆ ಸತ್ಯಾದಿ ಕುಟುಂಬಿನೆ ಮುನಿಮನ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಚಿನ್ಮೂರ್ತೇ ಮಾಯಾ ಸೃಷ್ಟ ಜಗತ್ರಯ ಸಕಲ ಸಂಚಾರಿಣೆ ಸಾಯ ತಾಂಡವ ಸಂಭ್ರಮ ಜಟಿನೆ ಸೇಯ ನಿಶಂಭವೆ ನಿತ್ಯಾಯ ಹೀಸ್ ದ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಶಿವ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಈಸ್ ಎಟರ್ನಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ತ್ರಿಗುಣಾತ್ಮನೆ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ತ್ರಿಗುಣಾಸ್ when he unites with shakti to manifest this world so he also enters the three bodies he also enters into the three gunas but he is not attached but he does his work so he is trigunatmane purajite one who conquer jita conquered the three puras which belong to the tripura asuras and also it refers to all the triputis katyayani shreyase katyayani shiva is the shreyas of katyayani for katyayani he is the shreyas because shiva is there with that katyayini she is radiant shreyas means the bright light bright light the radiance and also happiness goodness auspiciousness these are all tejas who is katyayini katyayini is the incarnation of shakti who is incarnation of the bright beam of light gathered from all devatas katyayini because she had to kill that mahishasura she needed that radiance in her she needed that shakti in her so all the devatas gave their shakti to her in the form of radiant light that is katyayini for that katyayini shiva is the shreyas shiva is the like the phala the fruit ಆದಿ ಕುಟುಂಬಿನಿ ಸತ್ಯಾಯ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸಾನಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ದ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಹೀಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸತ್ಯ ಆದಿ ಕುಟುಂಬಿನೆ ಶಿವ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಆರ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಜಗತ್ so they are the two people who form the family so that is the first family so beautiful aadi kutumbine jagatha pitare bandu jagatha pitaro vande parvati parameshwara so because they are the first pair couple for the whole jagat they become they became pitaru the parents aadi kutumbine aadi kutumbine and then muni manah pratyaksha chin murtaye he is present 
residing in the minds of all the sages, seers, and the yogis in the form of chit, knowledge, jnana, the light of consciousness. So, chin murtaye. Can you visualize it? Shiva being present, residing in the form of light of consciousness, the jnana, which is Nirguna Brahma. So they have realized Shiva as the light of consciousness. Maya Srishta Jagatrayaya. Using Maya, he has created all the three worlds. Sakala, sakalam Naya Anta Sancharine. Amnaya means all the uh, Vedas. So, one who wanders and Sancharine, one who moves around in all the Vedas. Sakalam Nayanta Sancharine. And he is Amnayanta Vedanta means Upanishads. In that, he shines out. That, that is where he strongly roams around, moves around. Because the whole Upanishad is pointing and highlighting that pure consciousness. Brahman, both Nirguna and Saguna Brahman as the consciousness. Sayam Tandava Sambhramaya, one who is immersed in the Sandhya Tandava. That Sandhya Tandava is so visually so magnificent. All the gods and goddesses, all the great rishis, they assembled in Kailasa. And Shiva made Devi Parashakti to sit on the golden throne, which was studded with Ratna, different gems. And different Devatas took different instruments. Like Brahma played the Swaramandala. Vishnu played the Tala, Nandi, the Mridanga, and Lakshmi started uh, singing Saraswati Veena. And he started dancing Sandhya Tandava. And everyone, they were all immersed in that Ananda of looking at Shiva Tandava and the music which they were hearing were also so divine. And the place is Kailasa. <laughs> what else is needed? And it is divine music, divine dance, divine presence, divine place. So everyone rushed towards Kailasa. When they were all enjoying the, the boom, started tilting. Because everyone is there enjoying. That is when Agastya Muni was sent towards south, all the way down to balance. So it's a beautiful vision, Sandhya Tandava. <laughs> Yeah. Sayam Tandava Sambhramaya Jatine Sayam Nati Shambhavi. I think I have started this. Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti, Om. 
ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿಯೋ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿಯೋ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿಯೋ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿಯೋ 